deserving of all of our praise. Amen. And so certainly when we come into God's house, we ought to be ready to render unto him Amen. what he is so worthy of Amen. and what he is due. If you're with us tonight and not members of the body of Jesus Christ, you're truly and indeed our honored guests, and we're just glad to have you here with us tonight. We hope and pray that you will study the Word of God with us attentively, understanding the things that will be taught from God's Word to such a degree that if you examine your life and your walk with God and discover that it's not according to Scripture, it is our prayer that you will change tonight because tonight might be your last night. Amen. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 9 and beginning at verse number 11. And if you will, please stand with me for the reading of the word of Almighty God. And I would ask that you would read these two verses aloud with me, please. Once again, Hebrews chapter 9. And beginning at verse number 11. Together with me, please. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of ghosts and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. God bless you. you may be seated and may the Lord certainly add a blessing to those who are the readers and truly unto those who are the hearers of his holy and his divine word. Tonight, we want to talk to you from the subject beyond the veil. We want to talk about beyond the veil. In Exodus chapter 26, God gives Moses instructions on how the inner dressings of the tabernacle are to be constructed. Beginning at verse number 31, God gives Moses the instructions concerning the veil of the tabernacle and God tells Moses that he wants the veil to be made of blue purple and scarlet it is to be made of fine twine linen and hung on four pillars of shittim wood and then he wanted him to overlay the wood with gold. No. The veil was going to be used to divide or to separate the holy place from the most holy place. Uh, it was in the most holy place that the Ark of the Testimony would be placed. Uh -huh. The significance of the Ark of the testimony is that this is where God would commune and meet with the high priest once a year mm -hmm. on the day of atonement. Mm -hmm. God's presence would abide above the mercy seat right in between the two cherubims that had their wings facing each other as they were positioned on top of the Ark of the Covenant yeah. upon the tenth day of the seventh month of the year it was scheduled that the high priest would go alone within the veil mm -hmm. and he would make atonement for the sins of the people. Mm -hmm. Atonement as described biblically is literally reconciliation. It was the offering of sacrifices unto God because somebody had done wrong. Okay. It was the satisfying of divine justice. And the purpose of atonement was to bring the sinner back into a peaceful relationship with God. Yeah. Atonement was an offering of special sacrifices to remove the effects of sin and to help one restore fellowship with God. Yeah. It was only upon the day of atonement that God would even allow the high priest to go beyond the veil into the holy of holies 
the high priest once he would go into the holies of holies couldn't come bare handed but he had to offer sacrifices first for himself right. and then the sins of the people okay. the priest was not allowed beyond the veil at any other time except when he was making atonement and atonement could only be made beyond the veil okay. it was beyond the veil that God would meet with the high priest. It was beyond the veil that God's presence would rest right above the mercy seat in between the two cherubim that had their wings facing each other. It was beyond the veil that the children of Israel were able to get free of their sins. Well, as we look at mankind today, my brothers and sisters, we can still see that man is standing in need of atonement and reconciliation yes. with God. Yes. Sin has separated man from God and man needs a way to get things back right with God. But the problem today as it was under the old covenant is that if atonement can only be made beyond the veil then we need an high priest who is able to go beyond the veil and make the necessary sacrifice so that everybody who accepts God's plan can be reconciled unto God. Yeah. Well, the Bible shows us that Jesus is that high priest yeah. because Jesus is one who made reconciliation possible between God and man. Yeah. Look with me in Romans chapter 5 and beginning at verse number 10. And let me show you that the Bible informs us that Jesus made the reconciliation possible between us and God. Romans 5.10, the Bible says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Second right. Corinthians chapter 5 and beginning at verse number 18. Look there with me, if you will. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and beginning at verse number 18. The Bible says, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and committed unto us the word of reconciliation right. Ephesians chapter 2 and beginning at verse number 13 notice what the Bible says here Tell Ephesians us. chapter 2 and verse number 13 but now in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh or near by the blood of Christ for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition uh, between us. Even in this passage, Paul shows us that Jesus has gone beyond the veil oh, no. to do for us Amen. what we could not do for ourselves. Yeah. He has broken down that middle wall of partition, that thing that stood in between us and God. Jesus has taken care of it. Amen. Therefore, he says he has abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man as so making peace that led by he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, mm -hmm. having slain the enmity thereby. Here once more and again, we are shown that Jesus as our high priest is the one who made reconciliation possible. Uh -huh. When you look at reconciliation as these very verses have taught us, mm -hmm. we see that he's talking about making peace between two parties. It's literally bringing back into harmony and tranquility two that were at odds with each other. Right. See, the longer we stayed in sin, yeah. we were at odds with God. Yeah. We serve a holy and a righteous yeah. God yeah. who does not 
allow himself to dwell in the presence of sin. Yeah. And if I ever